Uh, let's talk a little boxing, man. Um, a few big fights coming up. Uh, Thurman versus Garcia. Huge fight coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, both welterweights in their primes, champions, undefeated. How, how does that go? You, you know, that, that's a really good fight as well. Uh, Garcia, I have to be honest with you, I underestimated him when he was going to fight Matisse. I thought Matisse mm. was going to take his head off. Yeah. And he just, you know, yeah. made uh, made easy, well, not easy work, but he made convincing work out of, out of that victory. Uh, Keith Thurman, you know, I think this, this this is definitely the biggest fight that, that's out there against a guy who, who truly is a boxer. You know, he fought Sean Porter and some of those other guys, but Sean Porter was more of a guy that just comes at you and just uh, uh, a guy with more courage and heart than, than you know, no, no disrespect, than really true technical boxing skills. And now you have a guy with both in Garcia who, who can box and he's got heart and he's going out there against some bigger names. So I think uh, that's going to be a big factor too. I think when the deeper the fight goes, I think that's where we're going to see exactly who's going to be taking over. And I think the deeper it goes, typically the boxer has a little bit more of, a, of an advantage. If, uh, if you got the puncher in Thurman who is not connecting that shot that he wants, he may get a little frustrated. And I think at that point you might see you know Garcia take over. But, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a very 50-50 type fight, which is a fight that everybody loves. Yeah, exactly. Uh, another, another kind of close fight, middleweight division, Golovkin versus Jacobs. Uh, a lot of people kind of point to, to Jacobs' uh, getting knocked down by Sergio Mora, his KO loss to, to Piero, even though that was yeah. like six years ago. Um, but, I mean, right now he's on, a, I think, a 12-fight win streak with 12 KOs. I mean, he's just as dangerous. How does that go? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, he, he, he really surprised me in that fight against Kid Chocolate. You know, he caught him with a, with a shot cold, and, and that was basically all it wrote. Um, I think when you go through so many personal struggles like Jacobs has done, I think it really lets you know what's important and... Uh, and he's really gotten a second chance at life, you know? Yeah. Literally, literally, yeah. yeah literally, literally, second yeah. chance at life. So I think that's where he's, he's improved his skills, improved his mindset, his, uh, his uh, focus in the sport. But then you got that monster, you know, Gennady Golovkin on the other side, which uh, which every, every guy who has trained with him has told me, you don't realize how hard this guy hits until you get hit, you know? And also, you don't realize how hard this guy works unless you're in there with the gym. You know, he's the first guy in, last guy out, very supportive of everyone. And uh, I mean, and just when you when you talk to the guy, you, you can't help but like him. You know, he's so likable. <laughs> right. And you really you, you think, oh man, this guy is a, is a monster in the ring. Um, I, I think you have to favor Golovkin in that fight. Uh, you know, certainly it's one of those things where you you wish Jacobs all the best, but uh, but yeah, it's got to be so heavily favored in Triple G's favor. Uh, obviously, a name always connected with Triple G is, is Canelo. He signed a, a fight first, obviously against Chavez Jr. First, I want to ask you. Obviously, what do you think about that fight? How does that play out? But also, what's your take on the, the weight issue? You know, Canelo did not, didn't want to go up to 160 for Triple G. Now he's going up to 164 and a half. So tell me first, how do you think the fight plays out? And, and what do you think of take on the whole weight Well, you issue? know, I think there's also that aspect. I think there it's more of a business uh, factor than really the... I mean, no fighter that goes into the ring is afraid of anyone. Right. You know, these guys... You know, they, they fight anyone, anywhere. Uh, when you get management involved and you get networks involved and all sorts of other things going, uh, there's little fine details that have to be worked out. And I think really that's probably the, the biggest, you know, who's the A side, who's the B side, who gets this much and who gets that much. That's when it really gets, you know, convoluted and there's some issues come up. Um, as far as the, the fight with Chavez, I think that's a very dangerous fight, man. Chavez is a, is a big human being. Yeah. You know, he's, he's a, at least my size, you know, and uh, I mean, I'm like 6'1", 200 pounds, and, and I've seen him where he looks even bigger than me. Yeah. So, you know, granted, at fight time, he's going to have, uh, I think the big factor is going to be how dedicated Chavez trains. If he comes in, you know, uh, 100%, if he makes that weight, which, which that's a big if, uh, and then also the fact that there was no, I don't think there's a weight limit on the fight, right? The what you can gain afterwards. I don't believe so. No, no that, I think there's that's just a big, just a million dollar yeah, penalty every time. A big, he's over that's a big that. factor. And um, you know, Chavez, he can take a really good shot. Yeah, obviously, he's he's kind of gone through some difficult moments, both personally and professionally in the ring. Um, but Canelo's a guy that I think Canelo can outbox him. He's the, he's the much better boxer, but he's not a one punch knockout kind of guy, and he's not a guy who's ever fought somebody that big. Um, so I think it's going to be a fight where, where Canelo has to fight very carefully, be very technical, probably wear him down as the fight goes along. Uh, but Chavez, I mean, he's a guy, he could, if he connects a shot and lands a good one, and if he comes in 100% well-trained, I think it's a very competitive fight. And uh, I don't think it's quite a pick em fight, but it, it's, uh, it's certainly a fight that's at least 60-40, right. you know, taking the, the size into, into consideration right. and then also the, the, um, the training factor. Yeah. That's definitely the, the question that everyone has, right? Is, sure, I mean, is what he looks like in the way in. Yeah, he, exactly. If he comes in 
hydrated looking and all that, right. then, then he's definitely a dangerous yeah, I mean, fight. You, for you, sure. you know, we saw him that 24 7 when he fought Sergio Martinez, you know, where he's waking up at the crack of 5 8 p.m., you know. So, <laughs> uh, and like I said, you, 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 it depends on sometimes people are portrayed a certain way that they're really not for entertainment purposes, yeah. but you know, you just got to take it at face value. And, and um, I mean, it, it's a fight that seems to be very important. I know one thing Mexico will come to a standstill when right, that fight goes for on. Sure, yeah. yeah, the streets will be empty in Mexico, <laughs> so that'd be great. S speaking on that, I, I was talking to other media members, and they were saying how. You know, Canelo's usually very poised, very, um, you know, like uh, politically correct and sure. stuff like that. But I feel like Chavez, you know, I feel like Chavez would get under his skin. I mean, uh, they speak the same language, so, you know, Canelo's not hearing it through a translator. You know, I think Chavez right. will, will try to kind of jab at him sure. a little bit. You know what I mean? Do you do you see the, the promotion of this getting maybe a little more personal than, than some of Canelo's other fights? Quite possibly, and I think also the media will play a big role. Um, you know, for, for a while there, I mean, you know, Chavez Jr. was the, you know, the the golden boy of Mexican boxing, and there and there was always that talk: who wins between Chavez and who wins between uh, between Canelo. And finally, it's coming to fruition. So, uh, you know, I don't believe when guys say it's personal. I mean, all fights, you know, they they put that aspect into it. But I think it's definitely a lot of pressure on him, where, you know, it, it really is going to be a factor to where, uh, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, people can always hold over your head. They're like, yeah, you're great, but you lost to Mayweather. Or, if you, yeah, you're great, but you lost to Chavez. So I think that's where the pressure comes in, to where uh, it'll be that blemish on the record that, that people will always be able to throw at you. And, and you know how the boxing crowd is, you know. Yeah. If, if you lose against somebody, you're going to hear it from them, yeah. regardless of what you do. You know? Unforgiving, for yeah, sure. You can win three more belts, and they'll be like, yeah, but you didn't beat Mayweather, <laughs> right, exactly. you know, or yeah, you didn't beat Chavez. So it's, I think that's what that's where the pressure lies. And last question, man. Um, obviously, given if both favorites win, Triple G and Canelo, if this fight does happen in September, how do you feel about Pesha? Uh, you know what? I think it's a it's a much. I think Canelo has a bigger advantage against Triple G than he does against Chavez. Okay. Um, I think Triple G is a guy that, that if, if you box with him, he's never really fought a boxer. He never really fought a guy that's been moving on him, that's been making him work. Uh, a lot of the guys have stood right there in front of him and, and tried to go toe to toe with him and take a shot, and then they realize that that's not going to work. You know, um, I think he's a guy who, who, if you box the perfect fight, you can give him some issues. Um, if you stay away from that power, I think that's where, where it really it's really going to be the, the big factor. I think if, if Canelo doesn't sit there and, and you know like like they say try to prove quién es el más macho and go toe to toe, <laughs> then I think he, he's going to have a, a lot of success. And I think it's a much closer fight than people think. Um, size wise, they're also much more comparable than he is against Chavez. And we've never really seen Golovkin take a take a shot, man. We don't know how he reacts to a shot. You know, it's kind of like Tyson when Tyson was knocking everybody out. And then he got clipped, and uh, yeah. and then we see how you react, you know, when, when those legs go kind of, you know, spaghetti legs, and and what happens then, you know. I, I'm a big guy where I see, if I see a fighter with 20 victories, you know, no losses, all 20 KOs, I'm more impressed with the guy that's, you know, 15 and 15, and then you look at his record, yeah. and he's fought against all these uh, all these guys, you know, basically a who's who of, of fighters, you know, and those are the guys that really been put through the through the, through the fire. Yeah. So I think uh, it'll be a, it'll be a nice test for both of them, in particular, you know, Triple G, who you're fighting a really massive name, a guy who's in your weight class, you know, and uh, and uh, really with some good boxing skills and a big following. It's definitely a dangerous fight to, to find out what your chin's like if you it, get it caught. Is, yeah. It is a dangerous <laughs> fight, but I mean, they, they, any fight you go into is dangerous. Exactly. You got to respect all these guys. When they go in there, it's it's literally you know life and death, and sure. you're one punch away from ending your career. Yeah, true, definitely. Luba, thank you so much for your time, man. I really, really appreciate it, and uh, and we we'll look forward to seeing you at the fight. So you uh you have social media. Stuff? I do. Uh, you can Tell the fans. find me on Facebook on uh, at uh, Lupe Contreras. I'm not really sure how to find it, but it's a, it's out there somewhere. Right. Uh, <laughs> I'm on Twitter at La Voz del Bo and uh, I'm a guy that doesn't really talk a lot of boxing but uh, you know I just like to show people my personality you know they see you in the ring and they're like wow you're so serious up there it's like well they pay me to be that you know? <laughs> that's not how I am in my real life so a lot more humor uh, you get a lot of pictures of my dog <laughs> and stuff like that. So you can look me up on Facebook and on uh, on Twitter. Well, we definitely know your fight sports, man. I really appreciate the time. Thank you very All much. Right, man, no problem. Thank you.